Hi, it's Jameson. And, and I want to just um, help my friend out a little bit here. He's got the best podcast I ever heard. His name is Stu, and it's called Stu's, what is it? Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> Wrestling Podcast. What a surprise. <laughs> I forgot that word. Um, but, yeah, it's really great. I'm not just saying that. I mean, he's not even paying me, all right? You're listening to Stu's Wrestling Podcast. It's time for British Wrestling Sharpshooter, your host, Stu Palmer. I just got this feeling that I've never ever had. Who am I believing? I can you tell me again? Before we get into episode 93 with James Reed, I want to say a big, big thank you to everyone across the world for listening, for streaming, for viewing the show. It's been amazing. We've been in the Danish all-time wrestling chart now for a couple of months, in and around the 30 mark, peaking at 25. So I want to thank my Scandinavian contingent for listening to the show. Also, go to WrestleMerchedCentral.com and you can find the Stu's Wrestling Podcast merch on there. There's mugs, there's beanies, there's caps, there's varsity jackets, hoodies, you name it. It's all at WrestleMerchCentral.com. Just type in Stu's Wrestling Podcast at the top and you'll find the merch there. Now, leading into episode 93, we are back to the UK, to a place just up the road, 60 miles away, Liverpool, to talk to one of the upcoming talents on the northwest scene, James Reed. I've got to know James very well after doing two shows at Superstar Pro in Liverpool with him. A freestyle fighter, he incorporates some of his skills from the boxing ring, from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and grappling. James is so, so humble and even I was watching before the first Superstar show, he was helping the other wrestlers set the ring up. He even hoovered the ring, we talk about that. He respects the business of pro wrestling, the people that came before him, the people that will be coming in after him. I really, really like his stance about it too, the professionalism from him. And there's going to be a lot more to come as James is getting booked for other promotions as well in the North West, even on the North Wales coast. So my guest, without further ado, for episode 93 of Stu's Wrestling Podcast is UK Liverpool up and coming in the wrestling biz, James Reed. Enjoy. My guest today, all the way from Liverpool in the UK. We are back in the UK because so I've done quite a bit with American guests. My guest today is pro wrestler, freestyle fighter, James Reed. All the way from Liverpool today. How's it going, mate? Hi, Stu. Thanks for having me on. You all right? Absolutely great, man. All good, and it's an honour to get you on. I just want to ask you, we were at Superstar Pro two weeks ago for the first show back. I think that would be a perfect starting point just to see how it was taking on Sam Bailey for yourself, being back in with the fans, because I know you guys had such a lengthy layoff due to COVID, no shows. So, yeah, just how was it for you at Superstar Pro in Kirby a couple of weeks ago, man? Yeah, it was experience, man. It just felt like it was like... You were going back for your first match, where like um, I'm usually like if you see me on a show, I'm usually out going. I've spoke to everyone, like like speak to everyone, like you know, um, and like see how people are, you know, and really talk to backstage and that. And then just that shows, I was like really nervous getting back, and um, I just kind of kept myself to myself until after the match. So then I was like, oh, it's done now. I can I can talk to everyone now. So I was a bit, I was dead nervous, thinking like it did feel like that first match. Um, nerves coming back back in like it's like your very first match but like um, I should be alright after that now but um, yeah it was experience working with Sam um, obviously it was meant to rest someone else it is what it is um, and yeah like Sam used to train us at FS when James Reek and Zach Gibson left so um, it, was, it was nice to get in there with someone who was like had that experience and and no he was, he was coaching me as well there to get back in for your first match in front of like a sellout crowd like that it was an honour to call the match as well. Obviously, myself and Mike Angus were very close to the ring where we were. So yeah, it was. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the match. It was. It was. It was good, man. It was good. I, to, I enjoyed that, man. Yeah, it's yeah. good to see you incorporating your combat sports background as well in, into you know into the match. You know, getting ground based, the ground based side. That's why I enjoyed calling the most. 
on my I end. I did want to incorporate a lot more, even Sam wanted me to, but with a family crowd, they're not they're not there for combat sports stuff, man. They just want to see big moves. Like, like if I if I went to like a proper indie show, I like um, when it's more like like proper fan base, like you know, like like really hardcore fans or like people really into it. Um, I could do that type of stuff where like they'd understand, but like kids, like family, kids, and that they don't really want to see like MMA stuff or anything like that. They might just like see the odd like yes kicking thing with Daniel Bryan, and like they just want to be see big slams, man. They, they don't want to see much. Um, MMA stuff like I was saying in another podcast earlier um, what I've done a few months ago that I know my background it's like I don't want to be incorporating a lot of MMA stuff anymore anyway it's like if you want to see MMA stuff I go watch the UFC or they go watch the mm-hmm. UFC like as a, as a wrestling fan anyway I want to see wrestling it's like it's nice to have some MMA stuff and Jiu-Jitsu stuff and stuff like that at the start and maybe a surprise towards the back end like I don't know, you could do it like the technical start of it at the match and then, oh, no, we like, oh, we tried the triangle or like tried the armbar towards the end kind of thing. But constantly doing it in the match, you just think, well, it's not really a wrestling fight now. It's just like a wrestler trying to fight an MMA guy. Do you know what I mean? And then if the pro wrestler goes over the MMA guy, the MMA guy looks weak and then that sport looks weak. So it's just nice to incorporate little bits in. But I am saving... Like that, what you've seen is not like that was just like a little scratch of the surface. Like, um, I think you've seen where uh, we locked up. I done a Russian two to one on him, then I done um, a catch wrestling um, take down on him, and then I just literally just sat on top of him just to mess around with his wrist locks and that. I just sat on top, just um, manipulating his joint and that. And like I said, if it was like proper tech and stuff like that, the fans and the families wouldn't really be into that. Do you want, like I said, do you want to see big slams and that? So, um, I'm hopefully going to start incorporating a little bit more like takedowns than I am going to do like arm bars and stuff for that type of show. I was like, like I said, kids would like, I got like where I'd done the, um, the wrestling takedown where I got him into a Kamora lock and then kicked me foot through and he span over me. That got a bit of a pop than just sitting there trying to manipulate his, um, his, his hand. Do you know what I mean? So I've got like, don't worry that, that like, I've got hundreds of freaking takedowns to do. So, um, I'll, I'll hopefully should have one more than just that one de- next time for you. <laughs> That's yeah. it, man. That's it. How how is it going back to crowds and and different crowds? It must be nice for you to adapt. The knowing knowing your audience from show to show and who you know who who's in attendance. Yeah, um, like I said like like if you if I don't know let's say TNT, um, then then types of crowds where like. They are look. They just after pure wrestling and storytelling and stuff like that. So um, there's like ded- I know there's like dedicated fans who try and go like uh, like the, the old like Wrestle Island, BWP, TNT, the other Future Shock. It's always the same group. And um, you, like nine times out of ten, you will just see them on like a random show somewhere else. And they are after like the storyline. They are after like the pure wrestling stuff. Like the family shows, like I said, the kids are just after like big moves. So if you go off, put them in a wrist lock and stuff like that, the kids will be like, all right, now can you pick them up and slam them now? That's what I've come to see. So like, um, but no, that crowd was my, that crowd was boss man. Um, them 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 that fat they like, them fans were proper into it that day, man. Like um, they they loved Dean Omar. Like I was even, I like literally done my I done my match. I was like right sounds. I'm sitting in the crowd now. I I went and found my nephew and sat in the crowd. And, like. Um, I said to me nephew, like my nephew's come to like loads of shows at me, and I said like, you know, what before the show? It's like, boss, it's, this is boss, this place, you know, it's like boss venue. All the all the families are proper into it, and that. And he was like, right, besides my match, like, what what have you enjoyed the most? He was like, oh, like every single match I've enjoyed. I was like, really? There's not one that he went. I'm telling you now, they've all like stood out to me. So when people have been saying to you, what what do you think of the show? And I was like, well, my nephew loved it. He absolutely loved the show. So. And he's someone who's hard to get over nowadays as well. Like he's he's grown up or known about the storylines and like the selling and stuff like that. And like he just said, I couldn't find one bad match in that. He, he properly enjoyed it. So if he enjoyed it, I know the rest of the fans would have enjoyed it as well. That's high praise coming from your nephew, yeah. as you say. That, that's that's yeah. cool. That's cool, man. I think now would be the time to go back to 2018 when you started at Fighting Spirit with James Jake, Drake and Zach Gibson. And just yet yeah, about your start there and going to the school, which was highly regarded us us as fans. You know, everyone knows of fighting spirit. 
and, and guys that have come through there. How, how was your time there doing that in 2018, yeah. starting out? It was an experience working with them, man. Um, so how I got into there was like, um, I, I used to do boxing. Like I felt if I put my phone up the window now, you'd be able to see the boxing gym down the road. That's, that's how close I live to the frigging boxing gym. And uh, I obviously had to stop boxing. So with me, it's like, well, what do we do now? What, what do we do now? Like I've always done something. And um, I like I went into bodybuilding. I didn't I didn't like it. Like um, one, it's too expensive. It's the most expensive hobby you're gonna ever have. And it just went for me. Like I'm not the type of guy to be like um, hitting the gym, hitting an arm workout, and then flexing the minute for an Instagram selfie anymore. By the way, because you might see some <laughs> on my Instagram still, but I don't do that anymore. Um, but I just didn't I just didn't like it. But um, so. I've always, I've always, like, I've always done like football and stuff like that. But um, I've always found a combat sport better for myself than I was like playing football and stuff like that. So um, I um, was where I was. I used to take my nephew to wrestling shows anyway, and like one day I was at SmackDown randomly, and um, with him, like his dad couldn't take him, so he said, "Do you mind taking him?" So said, yeah, so we took him down, and like James Streak and Zach Gibson and that come out for a match. And I used to work for a protein company now. The shop shut. They're going to B2B. with like business to business to the business customer no more. And uh, I've changed jobs. And um, so they used to come in the shop. And like, I never used I never used to think like anything of them. I used to think like there was normal customers treated them the same as everyone else. These advice, I was there, blah, blah, blah. And we'd always like, have a little gab in there. And um, they come down one day, James, they come down on the ring. I remember, I remember sitting, I was like in the left corner of like the arena. And he comes down, I went to my nephew, I know him. I said, I'm sure I've seen him wrestle. And I'm sure I've seen him somewhere. And then I, I put two and two together. And it out he was coming in the shop. And I was just that stupid at the time to think who he was. So then that I think that was like the Monday or the Tuesday. And then the Thursday he come in. And he was getting... It's sad that I like I'm short short term memory. I'm terrible with right, but long distance memory. I could tell you what I done like six years ago today. It's it's I'm weird like that. So it's it's. I don't think I'm that weird knowing precisely what uh, what's going on here. So he comes in and gets his opportunity session, and I, I went out to save him, and I went to him. Do you wrestle for WWE? And he he looked at me like proper weird, like like yeah. yeah how do you know? I was at SmackDown, you know, and he was like, oh, shut up. And we got talking and I was like, how, how did you get into it now? Because I thought, like, I didn't know you were training schools over there. I thought it was all like Americans and that. And, like people were just coming over to wrestle. Like, like that's just me. And um, he went, come down to school and have a go. I went, like, you know, I'm me down and that's so what I did. I went down and I just, I just loved it. Like, James, for my first session, I think it was only like two hours, two and a half hours but he wants to shove like a lifetime's worth of knowledge down your head in such a small time. But that was every session. They just tried to fill you with as much knowledge as possible for them sessions. And that was like throughout. So like at the time, Jack, um, Zach Gibson went there. He was like wrestling um, in other places or he was with the WWE at the time. I can't remember. But um, eventually you come in and like, it was nice being. It was honestly, God, it was it was great work. I mean, he, he has such an head on for wrestling, man. He just he just gets wrestling to the point like it's like everything what he says is right. And I'm telling you this now, like um, I done a show. <laughs> he showed it right. I done a show right. I'm explaining this. I went to I've done a show in Witness years ago, and it was actually against Steve Connor, um, Brian Adenson. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Brian Adenson, and um, the ceiling was too low. Like it was like, and my head was hitting the ceiling, and they were all laughing at me. Right, <laughs> they were all laughing their heads off. So, um, the the that was the say the Sunday or it was a weekend anyway, and I was at the session just before the weekend. Now that session, right? Um, Zach shows us like a bit of a hope spot where like you do three pins into a cut off. So one was like a um, a schoolboy, one was like um a, like a, a, I don't know the names of them. Like one where you hook them and bring them down, and then he was like one way you throw them into the ropes and you put the foot up, and then schoolboy you again, and the, the heel cuts them off. So, me and Brian Ainsley were in this dilemma where we were like, we're gonna we need to work around the ceiling 
this this was the main focal point. Like we have to work around the ceiling, and like he had a bad elbow, so we had to work around the bad elbow, so we couldn't do much tech and stuff like that. But I was the heel, he was the he was the face, and then it come to doing that spot right, and the reaction we got was boss. It was just like I sent him. He one pin tried to get him again. Second pin cut him off a little bit, threw him into the ropes, put his foot up. Sit, um, schoolboy me again. He got the third pin, and the reaction was boss. It was a bit like you know we're like if you're on a show and it says applause now, applause now. It was a bit like that. So I sent it to Zach Gibson just to say, like what's happened. Like I said, like you know the ceiling was too low, and I had to use the spot, and he loved it. And he said that was boss. He said that's got the best re- like like a boss reaction. What we were looking for and trading like it, 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 even his words were like. It was like what, like you had a show and someone's literally just saying pause at this moment, um, like applause now, applause now, because <laughs> he was getting the roll up. So, um, everything what he says, it is, it is right because look where he is now. The pair of them are really they are running away with NXT. So, um, it was amazing working under them. But like um, again, when they weren't there, we had loads of different coaches. We had Chris Ridgeway, we had um, Damon Lee, we had Sam Bailey, we had Danny O. Um, we, had, we had loads, man. We had loads of people come in and like, it was it was always like picking. Each brain out of like different ideas. It's like maybe Zach and JD's wrestling's different to like Danny Hopes, or like like Danny Hopes might, might have a different thing to like um, Sam. Like it's always nice to just pick something from each different person and like try and put it into your own game then and go from there. Many facets there when you talk about them guys. So that, as you say, that, that's that's incredible. That's incredible. Now I want to get to your first match. What what was running through your mind? Because it was like July 2019. You told me that that was the first match. What? Well, how? Going back, going back a couple of years now. How was it? What were your thoughts and feelings prior to getting in in the ring? Uh, this is this is a funny one. This you know. Um, so the reason why I got this match is because because of day four. And then, um, I've been at the MMA academy I go to for a year. Uh, David not long just joined as the, the MMA coach. And um, the pair of us just got talking, and then it turns out we both do pro wrestling. Like he, I was just a trainee; he was he was doing pro wrestling. Then he was like, "No, send me send me some of your stuff so I can have a look and see how good you are." Because he said, "Like it's been a year and you haven't wrestled. That's weird." That so sent him the footage, and then he was messaging me, going, "Maybe I, I might have you on a show. You know, it's only like a little charity thing." And he said, "But you know, it, just see what you think of it, and if you like it, you can carry on." Because even if I didn't do a show, I love doing the training. Like I said, I was had this discussion with someone yesterday. He said that even if, like, say, X amount of years down the line, I call it a day, I still love to do the training. I love, I love the training for it. It's, it's great. And uh, anyway, um, so he was saying, look, we're going to get you on the show. We're telling you to think, so what you think, blah, blah, blah. So I got on with Joe Bolt and uh, artist, artist day of the year it was. <laughs> and it's 20 minute <laughs> match. <laughs> and I hadn't. Like, <laughs> Honest to God, me and Joe would uh, uh, come out of that thing sweating, dying out of breath. Like Joe, Joe was bossed away. He, he just he, like it was a boxing ring we were in, right? So I remember him. Um, and then the Joe took up. He went, "Let me just get in the ring and see what the bumps like." And he took a bump and he come up and <gasps> oh, when it took the breath out, we went, "Oh, me back!" Oh, Jesus, like that, and we were like. Right, we're just going to try and wrestle around the bumps or some sort of luchador match here. And then um, we end up getting carried away with Denland's pumping and like the crowd were really into it. Like, like because um, it was my first match, um, like all the wrestlers were like backstage coming out. All the, the whole of the area was filled and I'd be just being there going, oh, like, no pressure at all. Like for my first match, like every seat was filled and I just remember looking around just going like, like this is it now. Like this is what you've been working for. You know, let's 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 get let's get to work with this. And I absolutely enjoyed every minute of it. Like it, like Joe Bolt was great to work with. He's a great lad. And um, when he, when he, I, every time someone asked me what was your first match, like I just think twenty minutes on the hottest day of the year. It was absolutely horrible. Man. <laughs> but no, it was a it was the it was a boss experience. It really was. I'm, I just. <laughs> <laughs> if that isn't a test of endurance, I don't know what is by the sounds of it. Oh, oh, honest, <laughs> honestly, I remember him. Um, sorry, I remember him. Um, I think it was a rumble that day, and um, Barry P. Wet comes out, and I think it was meant to be like a cruiserweight um, rumble or something like that. And Barry P. Wet comes out, 
giving out custard creams <laughs> to all like the fans and, that. and like they go to him, you can't come in. And he's like, no, no, I've like I've lost weight. I've, I was like slimmer of the week, so I can jump in this now. <laughs> and he just told them to leg it, and it, I think he's put uh, he's thrown out custard creams and anywhere and anywhere and everywhere. And when uh, Joe Bob got lashed out the ring. <laughs> He sat down and ate a custard cream. <laughs> he spat it out. And he was going, I shouldn't have done that because it made me waste the wrestling. Yes. <laughs> that was Barry's fault, that for throwing custard creams everywhere. Bit of retro with the custard creams, uh, uh, bloody hell, bloody hell, funny, funny. I think um, obviously you went on, you went on to wrestle for various promotions. So yes, yeah, some memories of that. I know uh, pre pre COVID, obviously. How how was that? Just some experience you can draw on that you remember early on from doing the shows or the yeah yeah the shows yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah like uh, when it, when people say to me how like how many matches and that you've done it's like it was more like appearances because when you're first getting out there it really is just showing your face like it it was just like me coming out so I only done here once I only ever done here once and. Um, it's weird though because I'm like always the healing training because most of the people it's like it's I don't that's only because like the person getting in with is a face as well as me and I'm like I'd rather put them over and get their stuff out than my own stuff so that's why and it's nice to do a bit of heal stuff just in case someone does go I need to be healed staying I don't have a, big, a clue what to do anyway so with being a face it's um it's just trying to hit the crowd to um, to know you and like it and you don't teach you that in training the, and which I'd love for so, someone to have training me for like um, it is just a matter of coming out your entrance news goes off it's just a matter of going hi I'm James I'm the good guy uh, yeah, I'm James I'm the good guy and it's just introducing yourself over and over and over again until they finally click on which was actually um, black, blank canvas it was in uh, 2020 is when I, f- I finally come out and um I said, they're going, hi, I'm James. And nice to meet you. It was kind of like, oh, it's James. We, we've seen him before. And I was actually made up. because It's like, I didn't have to kind of introduce myself anymore. It was like, oh, people know me. So I was like, that was like a cool time to be like, oh, like it's, it's actually paying off. Now people are starting to recognize me and see me face a bit more. So that got me onto more shows. It was like the more, um, the more people see me, um, the more I got recognized by promoters than to, oh, yeah, I've seen you before. And um, to throw you on so weird it was like turn up to shows and like offer help and I've brought me stuff with me just in case you need me that's what it literally was like I was literally um, cancelling plans to go to a show and like it was at one point in October the whole of October of 2019 I was at a show every single weekend and I remember because my girlfriend was going nuts going like <laughs> you seem to be at a show and you're not spending time with me but I'm like no listen you're taking on the chin now and once like promoters start like saying to me, you know, we want you back or blah blah blah, or you know, we want we've got a story here for you. I don't have to kind of do this anymore. So then it'd be like it'll be a bit more eased off. So it's like put up with it now, and then the hour work will eventually be paid off, which it has been. But like, I get to that now. But um, it was this. He just like so. Like I remember I said on a podcast lately. Um, like Ryan Silver, I used to go to shows with him, and um, I remember at one point I took my nan to the doctors. I was sat outside in the car park waiting for it, and he rang me, what are you up to tonight? So I'm just in the middle of clocks for that um, doctors with me now. now. So what's up? He said, do you want to come to Bolton for this, um, this wrestling promotion? I went, you know what? Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm going. So I stopped. I start, that's when I started distancing myself from training. But someone did say to me, like, you've got to stop thinking now that you're a trainee. You've got to start thinking you're a pro wrestler, not a trainee. You need to start distancing yourself from, from training. Where... I used to think, no, training's a priority. I started thinking, well, if I'm not at a show this weekend or on a show, I'm going to training still to, to keep the ring rust away. So I was only going there once a week and trying to work training around shows so the um, shows around training kind of thing. So, um, but doing that as well, though, like, um, so, like, I dropped me down off, literally ran home, put my stuff in a bag. Um, Ryan got dropped off to ours and then I drove the rest of them all the way to Bolton. And from doing that, 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 that guy, that was only a charity show that night. And now that guy's actually running Bolton Town Wrestling. And just doing stuff like that, and like I'm on his promotion now, just doing stuff like that, like um, cancelling your plans and just going, last minute things. It was like the extra mile of like getting on shows. 
and stuff like that. You know, just like if I did, if I weren't there, like the guy wouldn't know me. Like I messaged him saying, you know, uh, like a few months ago, you're saying, oh, wait, I've seen you both doing approach now. When, you know, do you remember me? It was only the one time. Like, oh, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, I'm happily to have, I'm happily to have you. So stuff like that. It's if I didn't go, I wouldn't be on this motion. Well, and I wouldn't have had the experience. So it's, it was just getting out there, doing little shows. And like, it was like doing battle royales, rumbles, dark matches. Um, it's just getting your face out there now. It's the point now it's like, I'm like the, the shows I'm on, I'm on now. Like I'm happy to say, like oh, yeah, I'm happy to have that number of amount of shows because it, like promotions because I don't really want to be traveling like to like likes of like miles away to like um, to like put rings now up again when it's like my like being a sport worker. It's like I feel like I'm like putting my life around work. It's not work around life. Mm-hmm. Where like I was work where where it's work now. The all like that protein place it was like where it was like work around life it's life around work so it's like I need to really be giving these people like four weeks in advance um, notice when I need a day off and stuff like that and like I can't really be like um, running off to like um, shows like miles away no more to set to a ring when I need to be back and um, making sure I'm there for the people I support and stuff like that so like the shows I'm on now is like that's that's, ha- that's happily amount I can happily do and um, they've all given me plenty of time dates wise as well knowing like what my job is and that so they've even gone the extra mile for me to give to make sure I get them dates off for them and stuff like that so um, the hard work has paid off it's just you just need to like Jack and Zach and, Zach and James Drake would always say like um, you need to be at shows either watching them or help setting up or just letting them know who you are you just go up and just speak to them all after the show and it goes the extra mile, so you know in future. Like I've seen this guy a few times before. You know what? I might throw him on one day or have, have a look at his stuff and that. So if I didn't do all of that, I probably wouldn't have been noticed, and still would have just been like a little trainee, just locked away, kind of doing what he's doing still. That's cool, man. That's good. You know what? That's sound advice for people wanting to get in to pro wrestling as well, James. They take a lot from that. What you know, what you have to do, what you have to sacrifice. Uh, so yeah, there's the good, good, uh, good words, good words that for people wanting to step in. You know, knowing knowing what it's going to take to to get to you know where you are now. That's what that's why. Honestly, take. that that come from that come from um, Zach and J- yeah. James Street man. It's just like they've told you that, and like others, like the likes of like I said, like Danny Open, Sam Bailey, and that, um, and they're telling you go to shows, go help out. Go and meet the promoter. Just go and watch. Go and support your friends. And that. if that's coming from them and where they are in wrestling, either the independents over here or like NXT over there, you know it's the best advice you could get in wrestling. Yeah. Cool, man. Cool. All right. I think now we need to talk about some matches that you've had that stand out and guys you've been in with. Just uh, yeah, some some of the matches you remember fondly. Uh, well, that the the, the um, my first match is always going to stand with me anyway. That, that it was just the crippling heat. I was just like twenty minutes. My first match I was only expecting like five. <laughs> That's always <laughs> still with me. <laughs> so I've wrestled the likes of like Sam Pitbull. That was an experience. Um, again, that was just like a little cha- that was a little charity match. But then it was like Sam. Um, Sam's had experience of like going to like. He, I think he was in like Taz's dojo. Was because I've yeah, had him so, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it was like it comes from everyone really. At this point, it's like it doesn't matter who you wrestle. They, they're always it's like you could plan this match, and uh, as, we, as I put this, it's like everyone's got a different piece of how to like plan a match. So what I'm saying, like where. Sam went to uh, went to like Taz's dojo and that he's got some experience from him. He's got like obviously Taz got a way of planning the, planning the match. So obviously Sam would have like took that from him, implemented it, and it's like right, Sam, um, uh, do you want to try this? And he'll go, yeah, okay, okay, but let's do this though. Let's and he'll he'll twist. Someone's always got a twist on it, or someone's always got another. It's like a similar way to then make it that bit better than what you were like planning in your head kind of thing so with Sam it was like you, you just kept it basic as possible and he was just like you know make sure you're doing this make sure you're doing that which it was and yeah that was one of the ones what stood out for me because again 
after wrestling with him, they'll end up getting getting me in with the map BWP then and then tag teaming with him. That was like um tagging with him was my second to last match. I didn't expect to do that because um it was meant to be it was meant to be Dave versus Sam against me to last. And then so they took sick and then um they put me forward to wrestle with Sam. So if it so if I didn't like meet Sam and wrestle him, just let him was to let him know, like you know, this is me, this is how I'm wrestling. That he probably wouldn't have given me a chance if, if if he didn't. But obviously, he did take the chance. He knew how good it was, and then um, he put me on to um, BWP. Then who starts giving me more of a chance and give me the rumble and stuff. So little bits like that got have gone a long way. I've wrestled the likes of like Matt Davis and Drill in a in a triple threat, and then like again, it's like you can plan a match, but then. People that have experienced, like, like I said, drill, like Sam, just just gone, um, um, and then Sa- uh, like Sam Bailey, I mean, just gone, like Sam. Then, like you can like give them, like, do you want to do this, 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 and see what you think. Then they go right, we can do X, Y, Z, but then let's change this though. Let's add this, and you go, oh yeah, like, I, did, I didn't think of that. So it's like where you're going, like. Up and like, like, kind of that plan on the match, they just go right, we'll do that, and then they'll just straighten it out. It, 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 it's just, it, it's just, it's just, once I get it's just like, di- it's like different people's experience of how, how they plan matches. It's like, it's like T Bone as well. It's like, um, I had like these ideas to do, like, for me, Shine, and he went, um, like, my, my Shine used to be, um, sleep, leap, bypass, drop kick. That was it. And he went, no, stretch it out. And so I said, right, if you know, if you throw me out the ring, I'll kick you anyway, like stretch it out more. He said, do this. And I actually took this, I actually took his advice for this one and put it on the show against Sam Bailey just then. I said to Sam, if you throw me over, I said to him, I said to him, T-Bone done this with me. I said to him, if you throw me over, I'll give you the head kick. And I said, if you go to a corner, I'll come over and, and go for a monkey flip, but obviously hold me and then throw me. And that's what T-Bone done with me. He said, what I'll do is, I'll go to a I'll go to a corner, I'll come over to me, I'll throw you off, duck one, but with T Bone, it was just a quick drop hit, but with Sam I done like a GYV thing where it was like hit him in the knees, come back up, hit him in the head. It is what it is. Um, but with T Bone as well, um, if I didn't wrestle with him, I wouldn't have took that idea and, and implemented it on. So again, it's like you you're wrestling like people and you're taking their tips and ideas. So we're like so, so say if me and you wrestled and you had this idea which was similar to like what I'd done with someone from a, a previous match I went, oh yeah like you know well you, we know with that idea they said to do this and it worked you know so it's like it's like I'm st- like as much as I'm doing shows I'm still picking people's heads as well as like obviously like the coach at FS and like Claw now with Sona and Lizzie I'm still picking um, people's heads to see how they and then carrying on over and over so every every match being experienced, like I said, I've had Sam Pitbull, I've had Dylan with Civil Threat, I've had Tyson T-Bone, I've had Sam Bailey just gone. Um, I've had Paradox. Again, I've either tagged with them or I've tagged against them. Again, the, the lads who were so easy to work with and that and like the so well over at Wrestle Island as well. So like a boss experience with them, just said on a recent podcast was like um Wrestle Island, um Pete give me a chance in the rumble. He said, No, get we'll get Trumpy in the rumble, you know, show your face. The islanders will know. And again, it wasn't to the point where it was like, Hi, I'm James. Nice to meet you. This is the point where people knew who I was coming out and they were cheering for me. He was like, Oh, like, you know, like, don't forget though, Wrestle Islands have still got that rivalry with BWP at the time because they were running the Paradox versus Dogs of War. So, um, even though I was like with Dogs of War for the whole thing, um, through Dave and Sam. Um, people still kind of cheer for me to come out to wrestle. I so, oh, cool. So, obviously, when I eliminated um, Gina and Joe, it was just me in the ring. And then Connor comes out. And then it was just that moment of just like the fans were just like, were like invited in basically to the moment of me and Connor being in the ring at the same time. So, it was like, oh, it's like a paradox and a, a dog of war. Like, guy who fills in the spot when Dave or Sam's not there so it was like it was kind of like a big bit it's like a little, little build up to a quick thing so it was like yeah, people were shouting Jay's from one side people were shouting Connor from one side it was it was cool to so just be in that type of moment man it's, it was kind of surreal for me it's like 
like this is a this is a cool moment. So, so it's just like wait there a minute, like just just take this in and like they'll be like egging the crowd on more to keep going and then you know we ran the spots and that and then um it, you know it's it's all it's every match has been some different experience where I can then like I've always been told like you need to start working crowd more and stuff like that. So um experience like the wrestle I remember but then that's experience like saying like work the crowd more and like I need to and that's what I need to do. So like um I've been through lockdown that I have like the only wrestling I watch is really old wrestling. So like I've been watching a lot of uh, Jimmy's uh, Jimmy Dragon Steamboat and the way he sells, it's not like a quick oh he's like he's like he's like, in it and he's showing the crowd like oh I kinda need you. Do you know what I mean? He's like that's all I'm trying to like sell towards like the crowd, say like oh like try and invite them in and get them in more to, if it makes sense, it it, it just it kind of makes sense to me. Someone's probably shaking their egg over. I don't have a clue what you're saying. Like, but <laughs> I'm just trying to like that's what I need to do at the minute. It's like it's just like trying like get the crowd in and like try and be more a past the crowd kind of things where I can get them going, and get them behind me more than them kind of like where I'm still, like kind of focus on the match at hands. Like at the point at the minute, I'm still like um, I'm still in kind of like fight mode in my head, like. Um, like this, I've just posted a picture on my Instagram, and I will zoomed in on my face, and I'm like proper staring out Sam Bailey, and it's the same face I used to give people when I used to box. And I remember, I remember the quote on that Instagram picture, right? Was a Mike Tyson one. I remember having the Mike Tyson DVD years ago. I threw it on, and when he said that, he said like staring people out, and if they if they look away, you know you've got them. Mm. And he went wrong. Mm-hmm. It was every time he used to stare people out in the opposite corner. I remember the guy from Preston. Um, he was looking left, right, anywhere but me. And I thought, I've got you. And I ended up beating him. I ended up getting a fight tonight. Never eaten that night. So that was always one to remember. So um, I was looking at him. I was just like, that's the look I used to give people. But then where I'm, where I'm in fight mode, still, like, I'm focused on him. I'm not focused on like doing the job at hand. And then, kind of entertaining the crowd at the same time. Do you know what I mean? I'm just thinking like, go, go, get the job done, just keep on them, keep on them. So they're being like, you on them a bit. Oh, entertain the crowd, bring them more into it, bring them, invite them more into it, let them be a part of the moment. So I still need that experience of like, I need to like take time of like, thinking like to myself, right, you've done your little bit, show out to the fans, bring, invite them in. And so, yeah, that's what I'm up to. Evoking the emotion, I think, would be the way way you're terming that. Getting that with the with the yeah. crowd. So yeah, that that's cool. That's cool, man. Any guys? I'm sure there's a list of guys. Some guys off the top of your head that you'd like to share the ring with. You'd like to pit your wits against to develop you in 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 pro wrestling. Is there any guys that you'd like? Maybe on the UK circuit, and maybe we'll we'll look a bit further then, like worldwide. I mean, I'll fight anyone. Me, I'm not bothered. But the people who are like stand out for me at the minute, who I, I like, I'd really like to do it with before I do call it a day. Um, I've said Danny O because me when Danny was teaching at um, FS, I used to I used to show Danny O some catch wrestling stuff, and like there was actually a move I shown him, and Daniel Bryan actually tried it against Roman Reigns in a. Um, it was, uh, I think it was, um, like, I oh, can't even, what was, what was Fastlane, that's it, Fastlane, I had Battleground on me for some reason, mm-hmm. Fastlane it was, and he tr- he was at the start, like, he, like having fun with him, and he tried to whip him up, and he, he, he totally missed the mark off it, but I sent a picture to Danny Oak and said, do you, do you recognise that move? And he was like, I do exactly know what you're on about, so uh, when, me, when I used to show the, the, um, the classes with Danny, Danny would be like, it's either we're doing this today, or we like, we'd have like an open ring session. So we had like an open ring session was like kind of do what you want or like, you know, if you need to pull Danny, he'll go over you with stuff and that. So like Danny helped me with me around the old suplex thing because he does it as well. So he helped me get, get better with that and helped me implement it more. So um, I used to grab him and be like, hey, um, oh, do you want to, to show you this? And then like, we, we be, I'd be showing him bits and then techie stuff and then he'd show me techie stuff and then like, hey, we'd have like videos from like World of, World of Sport Wrestling kind of thing and then um, We'd be like, do you want to try this? And the pair of us would go, go through it and stuff like that. So it's someone I definitely love to wrestle. It, um, sorry, excuse me. Um, 
Ryan Davis is one because um, obviously with his boxing background, my boxing background, hopefully we can give people a fight more than a, uh, than a wrestling match. Mm. So that would be cool um, to use that. Um, but I'm really, um, I'm starting to think because I'm trying to think of more people who've like kind of taught me as well. Like I said, Damon Lee, um, he was he was he was always um, he he was always there to train my name. Um, it's like I, it's like. <laughs> When we got to training, it was like, it's the same with Tony Davis. And actually, I said this all the time. I thought I about that now. With, with Damon, it was like, hi, he's all right. And then the minute the training started, it was like, no, we're training now. And then it was just, it, it was more based around fitness at the start. He'd get us doing like a deck of cards at the start of every every session when he used to pop down and help. And then um, and then he'd start like helping us do other things. It was like lo- loads of tech stuff, loads of basic tech stuff, what you've never thought about or seen. And like, he'd always used to say about it, um, about him and Joey always training and then it, like Joey A's always training and then um, he's definitely someone I'd love to uh, I'd love to wrestle I'd love to wrestle Tyson t again because because I'd like to see how I got on this time compared to last time because mm-hmm. I did I with the adrenaline that is always a bit rushful with some people on that which it was for me it was like when we got the ring he was like just make sure you slow down and stuff so again I'd like to see how I got on this time compared to last time Um like Sona Dyson again, like I keep saying this to this singer as praises and claw. Like again, he's someone who's like, you come in, hi, you're okay, but the minute training starts, it's just right, we're here to work. Mm. I'll speak to you after the session. And it's it speaks for himself, man. Like look look at where he is. You know, I think it's like future shock champion, he's a TNT champion. Um he is it's working with him is 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 being more of like say it's been more of like a, a, a bit of a fresh start again. It's like with, with me, it's like it's like when I go to training, it's like I look like a crank. It's because, but it's not because I'm there to work. Mm-hmm. And say like, if I've got time, I'll speak to you. Like, if you see me in the gym, it's like come over and speak to me in the gym. Like hi, you know, right? I, I mean, okay, between sets. But it's like wait there a minute. Like I'm I'm ready here just to, mm-hmm. to to do this. Just like I'll have a good gab to you after the session. But you know, between this and that, so with him, it's the, it's the same mentality. So like I've had people in training say to me, like, are you all right? Are you all right? Because you see him, I'm like, no, I am. I'm just switched on. It's just when you'll see me more relaxed after the session, I can have a gab with you all day, every day. It's just during the session. It's like I'm switched on. So again, it's like Sona. Like, I'd love to wrestle Sona. And then um, Chris Ridgeway would have been good. I think the clash of styles there, like my grappling backgrounds and his karate background would It'll be alright to see how that goes as well and that, that's it really I haven't really thought much about about who I want to wrestle it's just who, who the promoter wants me to wrestle that day I just turn up do what I need to do and hopefully they enjoy it it's good to hear that all business there you know where you are you're focused I, I like that I like that it's a good it's a great you know it's good to hear from you guys you know you got it. you got it. you know the blinker yeah grab the blinkers on that's what I'm taking away from you it literally is with me right and telling you know it's like that's what I'm trying to say before with that match it's like it's a blessing in the case it's like I am there to do what I need to do but at the same time I need to like realise you know I, I need to I need to realise like you know make sure you invite the crowd in as, as much as you're taking as a, a serious sport like it's the difference between Hulk Hogan and Bret Hart Hulk Hogan was an entertainer Bret Hart treats it like a real sport I treat it like a real sport so if it, I'm training like a, to, to treat like a real sport, do you know what I mean? Like when you see me in the gym and stuff like that, I'm training like for real. I'm, I'm here to like, uh, I'm not here to mess about when I'm here. I'm here to train. I'll mess about after the session or before the session, but when I'm here, I'm switched on. But um, that's what I need to find. I mean, it's like as much as I'm treating as like a real sport, when I'm in there, I just need to make sure I'm <laughs> entertaining the crowd as well. Cool man, that'll that'll come, that'll come absolutely, absolutely. Who who were some of your inspirations? I'm sure you watched wrestling as a kid. Yeah, James <laughs> Reed, James Reed's inspirations as a kid, and then obviously now now that you're in the business, and guys, yeah, guys when, that stood when, out. When we were kids, man, like like four, like there was four of us, like four brothers, like and like we were all like wrestling nut jobs when we were kids. Like I remember having the NWO Hulk Hogan. With a steel chain, he had the spray paint can and everything. I thought he was just boss, and he's like sit him on the on the seat of a night and stuff like that before I went to bed. And yeah, I was a probably years old, but like I was more into 
I like NWO and stuff like that because we didn't have Sky at the time. So we, I used to like sit up past, I think it was like nine o'clock after Cartoon Network had finished and uh, WCW would start. Yeah. And it, it eventually when we got um, Sky and stuff like that, I was able to watch the WWF um, back then. But um, I mean, NBA years ago though, uh, my brother's like nine years older than me, like the eldest is. So um, that's coming from like the likes of his lifetime as well. So like, I remember having like, I think it was SummerSlam on tape. And it was, I always remember this match. It was always Hulk Hogan and Bruce is the Barber Beefcake versus uh, Macho Man and Zeus. And that whole show, you think that this is, this is boss. But I love, all, I, I love all that old type of wrestling. And then I was a proper weirdo in, in primary school because I could do the Rock's eyebrow. Because I could raise one eyebrow, I used to be obsessed with the Rock. So, uh, but the more I get older now, where like I was a Hulk, uh, a Slam a Hulk fan, you know, I was a really Hulkamania fan. Um, I was, a, I was a rock fan, and that I, I am looking at more people who who do treat like a better a sport than just the entertaining value. So like the Rock was, the Rock was an entertainer. You know what I mean? Um, Hulk Hogan was an entertainer. I'm looking more at, at, at like like to be um, um sign of my kid now, Bret Hart. Like I literally watched through the week before in your house come on NXT. That week I watched all your in your houses with Bret Hart on them, on the, the network. I'm looking at more people who just take it a bit more serious than just the odd entertainer. And I'm like, I'm looking at more like Jimmy the Dragon Steamboat. I watch more of like um, the ECW as well. I, I, I love ECW, man. So um, like to Jerry and um, the, the super crazy. The matches with the Apple Boss. They like they're going back and forth with the tech and like having the standoffs and stuff like that. So um, it's like back back then it was like it was like The Rock, um, Hulk Hogan, and then like stuff like that. But now it's more of like seeing like the likes of Dean Malenko, seeing the likes of Bret Hart, seeing the likes of Dynamite Kids. I'm starting to I'm starting to develop more now. It's like I'd rather watch them over than the entertainers. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, Bret Hart's Bret Hart's is still my favourite to this day. So I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you spoke about we, it. We used to have the glasses as well. We I had the glasses. glasses and I, yeah, I went yeah, to SummerSlam, SummerSlam '92. I was obviously there. I've said this various times, but yeah, mm-hmm. Dad's like, right. My brother you went. Me two yeah. brothers went. Yeah, me two brothers went. The yeah. old Wembley and the um, the the um, big and got the glasses and everything. The, I let me brother tell you, they went years and years ago. The old Wembley. Yeah, '92. Uh, crazy I wish I was a bit older going to that show I appreciated it but I was six years old at the time so you know when you like remember yeah. you remember little bits and bobs like, one thing that stands out to me was Lennox Lewis behind Bulldog with the Union Jack yeah. that was like a moment I always remember looking up at the big screen that was above the ring and uh, yeah just things just are, think how cool it would have been though right being that age and watching the likes of like um, L- LOD come out with the motorbikes yeah, and man. stuff like that just that would have been boss to watch that man, and and it's how it's how fun they speak about that event over there even now, and and people who yeah, yeah. couldn't make it, it's still on a pedestal. You know they say about the WrestleManias and stuff like that, but I, I, that's even for the guys. That I'd like to know if they could do it now, though. I'd love to know if they could do New Wembley now, like if they could do if they could sell that out. I, 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 I think a know. big, I think a big show. If it was a Summer Slam again, say, yeah, I, I don't think they'd have any issues selling ninety thousand tickets. You know, I think there'd be mm. enough of, of a want to do it. But then you know, year from Triple H, that they're not, they're not going to do a big pay per view like that again. But yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd never say never, James. Yeah, I'm more of an NXT guy than I am main, mm. main roster now. Like um, I went to Blackpool take over twice. I was there when um, the lads won the tag team titles. I was there when. Um, um, yeah, I was, I was there the second time when they had the ladder match and stuff like that. And the atmosphere, what the NXT fans bring to, compared to main roster's boss, like like the, the chance of like, are you watching Vince McMahon? It's like it's like, it's like football chance for wrestling. So they are the more dedicated and they want to see wrestling than the, and the storylines than just go big move, big move, big move like a little family show. So, um. I'd like to see if they can do it with NXT. They probably probably won't be able to do it with Wembley and NXT, but I think main roster will probably be able to do it if they feel like a SummerSlam or like even a WrestleMania in there. I think a, a WrestleMania would definitely sell that place out. 
They couldn't cut. I'll tell you a story about us going over to America and there was people on the WWE travel package and they were all sat in one area. The main bulk of the people were from the UK. I'm sat the other side of the arena for Raw now on the Monday after WrestleMania. This has happened various times. The Americans couldn't cope with the chanting. They were chanting travel package, travel package and all this, right? Mm. And the Americans like, we don't give a fuck about your travel package. <laughs> but it's the, just the noise reverberating around the arena. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing, man. Just, just, just going off what you're saying about UK, European crowds and the way we chant and, you know, the way we're uh, very, you know, vocal and just they can't, they can't cope with this. I'll tell you that now. When well, we're... It's boss to see, man. Honestly, like when I was there at Blackpool, I just, I just, yeah. I was at the back row towards at the exit and uh, like you can see me fat head at one point on one, <laughs> one of the videos. I actually what I actually watched it the other day because I wants to watch um uh, I wants to watch Finn Balor versus Devlin and then I watched Devlin versus um uh, uh, Tyler Beats in the second yeah. one and then it was Finn Balor versus um Devlin and you could see me fat head at the back towards <laughs> the exit. But I remember just sitting there and just watching and like I just taking the atmosphere in of everyone like just screaming like are you watching Vince McMahon and all like this is NXT or like take your shoes off if you it was just it was just all there, do you know what I mean? So you don't see that with, like uh, with casual fans going to like the Echo Arena just to have like a day out with the family. You don't you don't see none of that. It's just it is just more NXT based, all that stuff. That's cool. I think going back back to like what you liked as a kid, maybe some matches. That stand out. I know you've obviously said about SummerSlam 1989 there, Macho Man, Zeus versus Beefcake yeah. and Hogan. Some some others that like jog your memory back, maybe that, that that stand out. I know there could be we could be talking about hundreds of matches here, but yeah, some that stand out. Um Bret Hart and Owen Hart, that cage match, what they had, that's always stood out for me. That that's easily one of Bret Hart's best matches that easily by far. Um it, I tell you what always just stood out for me for the kids. Remember when he's on the invasion? That was like, honestly, God, right? With that invasion, the whole invasion thing with WCW, ECW, WWE, going into school, the whole invasion story and stuff like that was like going in, talking to extenders, but it was not like wrestling. Mm. So we all get into the playground first thing. Did you see what happens? Like, oh, did you see Stone Cold turn, turn with them? And he's with, like, everyone was talking about it. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then, like, one of my first pay-per-views, right? I think it was, no, it was No Way Out. And it was the build-up of, like, Cactus Jack versus Triple H. Mm. And that was my first pay-per-view. They didn't know. I, was, I must have been, like, year four, year five. <laughs> and my parents didn't know. <laughs> I was sat up watching it, like, two or three o'clock in the morning. I've got to tell you, I'm dead low. I've had to run. The, he, he, he second older brother, like, ran down the stairs to, <laughs> to put the Sky Sports on. I was blagging that I was asleep, knowing... <laughs> I win. I was seeing a little. I was seeing a roomy little bit at the time. So like, uh, he's ran down the stairs, put it on. He's legged it back into his room. I'm, I've got the. I've got the telly on as low as I can, and like I've jumped out of the bed to sit close to the telly so I can hear what's going on. And again, that build up of all like like uh, Mick Foley saying you're not gonna get Bankines, and then you're gonna get Cactus Jack. That was cool. And then like Cactus Jack and to bleach on top of the cell where he's got the. Two by four with barbed wire around it. He's li- he's listening on uh, listening on fire or whatever he's done with it, and then he just goes crashing down through the hell in the cell and breaks the ring and like stuff like that's always still with me, man. Yeah, stuff like that's always still with me. It's good, great time, man. I'm more like early nineties, obviously late 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 eighties as well. B- bit prior to when I was watching, but yeah, great great time. Do you see much of the c- current product? I know you said you watch NXT NXT UK, not not so much main roster. Well, what what do you think of how how it is now and, and the way it's been over the last like twelve eighteen months with what's been going on? I have liked the build up of um, Edge and Roman Reigns. Mm. Um, I, I I I'm not like a complete. I do not watch main roster no more. I don't. I'm not no, like that. No. It's like it's yeah. It's like I'm. I just don't get up to watch it all. Like mm. I'll catch up with it down the line, or like I just watch like certain matches. Like um, I said, this is Eno Mac in the day. Like I don't, I don't watch the whole show no more. I just like to see. I, like, I just like the odd little storyline. So when I seen him and Chris Ridgeway were on Progress, I didn't, I, I didn't really sit and watch the whole Progress show. Only really watched the put on Dino Max. I was, and then I watched him again. See with Chuck Mambo, and that was it. It's not against. It's not against. No, no. Progress show. It's just. It's just. I, I like certain things. I just want yeah. to watch them. So when um, I, I just like watching the whole Edge coming back. 
and then like it's like is he a face or a heel because the face turns and I'm like dead angry and you're like you don't know whether you're like you're a face or a heel either at the minute but um, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying watching Edge's return and I do think he he deserves more of a crowd man so I can't wait to see like him in front of a crowd it's like he's obviously been gone for like X amount of years with his neck and stuff like that so it'll be good to see him in front of a crowd again like look what it meant to um, the girls main event like they were crying because they were in front of a crowd after the year um, Wrestlemania event and that for the women's title and they just decide not to cry they were trying to hold their emotions back because of the long wait and the crowds do make a massive difference do you know what I mean? So um, when I'm watching like the progress, or you're watching NXT UK or like NXT, and they're all like main roster, they're all doing it behind closed doors. They're not in front of crowds. So like, it's like when when I've seen before, like um, when I'm doing wrist holds or like tech in front of a family show, they're not really there for that. They don't they want to? Don't want to see any of that. So you're like, this isn't getting the reaction what I thought it would get. So you'd go into something else where you'll get a reaction where like. Um, NXT, like, like some NXT fans where it was like they were really into it stuff like that when you're doing these wrist holds and that they're into it they, they know what they're looking for so they'd be more into it so with the likes of the WWE behind being closed doors they're probably being like oh I would they're like having to sell out and then show out to something what would have reacted and it must have been weird for them because I had a thought it was there we like turn up and be like, like yeah and be like oh yeah it's not crap they'd say yeah back to me but it's, it's going to be good seeing the fans back man it's a good point what you're saying there. You know where these people moan. I, I, I've watched Raw and SmackDown. It's awful. <laughs> Internet wrestling community, yeah. just, just the way it is. Don't watch it then, is what I say. I know that's the easy way to, to look mm-hmm. at it. Don't moan. And they moan and moan and moan. But they still watch it week on week. Then you see these shows online now, you know, <laughs> where they're like reviewing the show. And they're just slagging it. They're just slagging it to high heaven. What's the point? What's the point? Like the yeah. stuff you can take, like you're saying we cherry pick because we've got, that much going on, you can cherry pick what you want to watch. Yeah, it's like, like it, yeah, I agree with you there. It's like, say if you're not interested in, I, I don't know, say if you're not interested in like storyline A, eh? so you you, you, jump, you jump on Twitter and you say, Jesus Christ, WWE, what are you doing? Or like AEW, whatever you're watching, what are you doing? You're calling it for everyone, but then you, you're interested more in storyline B. Mm. Just stick with storyline B then. So like, I, I don't I don't know what's going on. I'm going to do the storylines the minute and that. Like, um, to God, I swear to God, I'm swear to, I'm sick of seeing Rey Mysterio family storylines. Mm-hmm. Every storyline he's ever been into, it's always been about family. If I want to watch some about family, I go and watch Fast and the Furious. <laughs> do you, you know what I mean? Again, yeah. that was a terrible film yeah. the other day, but it's always about, about family. I'm strong. All right, I, I, yeah. I get the point. Yeah, 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 past, yeah. Like X amount of years. But, um, so I kind of don't watch Rey Mysterio storylines no more. But um, like the likes of Edge storyline, I'm interested in. It's like, like when they had that super fight with him and Daniel Bryan and Roman, that was a that was a boss match. But it was like I'd sooner have had Edge versus Roman because I wants to see will he let Edge beat him? Mm. Will he let the, obviously mm. when that super fight happened, I knew exactly what was going to happen. But I was a bit like it would be nice to see if he would let Edge win and see if he had a bit of a title run and stuff like that. But or maybe did I even thinking we'll build it up and build it up and then when we're in front of a crowd, he'll get the reaction we're looking for. Because it's probably better reaction from the crowd than people on the TV screen, like chanting and like sh- like waving in the background. Do you know what I mean? But um, like you've just said there, if you're not interested in it, it's like just stick to a storyline like you like then. Even even yeah. if James, even if there was a bit of balance to it, mm-hmm. whereby right, I didn't enjoy that. But I re- it's just it's just they moan and moan and moan. There must have been something mm-hmm. in those two three hours on the weekly show that they've gravitated to, you know, WWE is still the biggest th- thing in town, regardless, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, it's just, it, it baffles me sometimes, you know, they're not, they're yeah, not the fans, time, they're not fans yeah. in my eyes, yeah. the way they go on. I, the amount of times I tell people, I'll oh, go watch the independence before being yeah. roster. I say, I say to them, like, these are people who are trying to make it, trying to get there, so they are going to try and try harder than they are. In like like since we do like uh, NXT, they're trying to get onto main roster, so they are trying out. So you'll say people if you're not interested in the main roster, don't watch NXT or NXT UK, because again NXT UK is just trying to make it over there. NXT are trying to make it in there, but then if you want to really see people really trying to make it somewhere in there, go and watch independent wrestling. Then. Just go to a show, turn up. Like I'm always telling the lads in like, the gym and stuff like that. Oh, oh, are we getting on? Doing all right. Oh, when's your next show? And I tell them, and they'll go. 
Yeah, but you know, when I was young, I was watching the WWE and that, and they'll they mention like dead old matches and that, but I'm like, well, why don't you come and watch an independent show, right, and see how you get on? Because I'm going to tell you, you know, like, a lot more people go to independent shows and proper fans go to independent shows than they do if SmackDown was on the Echo Arena. Like, again, the Echo Arena or something like that, it's just like, just take your kids on a day out, just say you've been. That's it, really. That's good, that's good, man. I tell you what, as well, yeah. you you guys don't think anything of it. You know this site like, where you hear you hear about it off the the old school guys, veterans around the world wrestling, setting up the ring before a show. I was watching you guys at Superstar yep. two weeks ago. I know you won't think anything of it. You just do it. Not only that, mate, you were hoovering the canvas. The hoover, yeah. you were in there. Mm. It, you know, as much as you're there to do the show, and I know it, it's cliche, the wrestlers set the ringer. That's you pay your dues. It was it was nice to see. Uh, prior to the show, you guys, I've been, you know, the camaraderie, oh, set in the ring. Even you just hoovering the canvas. I took a lot away from that. Respecting what, you know, when you, you know, prior to getting into that ring, just that it's, it was, oh, it was amazing. That, it was yeah. amazing to say, I said to Angus, sorry, I let you answer. No, 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 go on, no, go on. Um, no, you know, I, appreciate, no, I appreciate that, man. Honestly, um, like you're right there with that, what you're saying, because um, when I got there that day, I, I come in a bit late. Um, my nephew wasn't even ready to leave the house so I was sat waiting for him for ages and um, I got there and I noticed the ring was like half done and um, the lads were still putting it together and um, the minute I got in there like every other show I've been at it has just been say hello to everyone just say hello to everyone see how they've all been doing and then set up but with me it was like that day it was like this this ring needs going up so let's see as I got in there I'd literally put my bags down and got straight in at the ring it needs to go for them for me to go and speak to everyone on that. I did see how dirty the mat was because the way it got kept and that's why I hoovered it. It is like it's like the way Walter says, like um, it's sacred. Like I'm coming into someone's sport. This isn't my sport. I'm coming into someone's sport. So I'm showing me respect over that by hoovering it. Like even when the hoover went there, I was brushing I was trying to brush it with that big and little crappy little brush. What way to <laughs> the fella said, yeah, there's a who for me. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm respecting someone's sport. Yeah, do you know what I mean? This isn't yeah. my main sport. This is like people who've grew up with it. They haven't got a background of football or whatever. They've gone straight into wrestling. And um, I'm, I'm respecting someone else's sport. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like when I'm in jujitsu and stuff like that, I'm, I'm always helping at the end of the match. Like, brush it, like at, at the end sessions, like hoovering the floor and mopping the floor with the guy who owns it, stuff like that. And uh, it, it, like, because of my hard work through Ring Crew, it gets noticed more by promoters. Mm -hmm. So I was always the first one and the last one out. It cost me hours some days from like um, from doing it, where like you'd be there for ages, putting it up and then be there for ages to set, set the assembly. But then it, it gets me other places as well, because if someone sees how hard you work at Ring Crew, then, then people put you forward to the Ring Crew. Like, oh, I'm Ring Crewing at this place. You want to jump on with us because you're putting a graft in now. And then promoters will see how hard you're working and then put you through for shows. They reward you by saying, you know what, mate, you're not being put my graft in. Um, jump in. But no, I'm glad you're seeing that. Like, to other people, would have been like, oh, it's just who mm. the, um, the ring, but whatever. But to me, it was like, no, I'm like, I'm respecting someone else's sport here. I'm making sure it's, it's clean. Do you know what I mean? Great ethos to have. Incredible. It's incredible to me. You know, I'm not a wrestler, but it was good to see. I'll tell you what as well been to loads of shows all over the world and stuff but seeing you guys take bumps in the ring as well and being so close to the ring <laughs> my day i couldn't do that i couldn't do that. i had to look into doing it and doing getting into it in other ways doing the podcast obviously then going on to commentary now so i i appreciate what you guys put your bodies through i tell you yeah um the bumps just take getting used to like um the first session i do on rfs um I've still got the picture now. My back had all kinds of red marks all over it. And uh, that was from running the ropes and stuff like that. And then, like, um, on Friday session at Claw, like, so I just said, you know what we'll do? We'll go over, like, some moves. Like, he's done suplexes, you know, backdrop, this, that, and the other. And uh, being in mind, I haven't, like, um, I prolapsed my disc last year. I mentioned that on the last, another podcast. And um, I hadn't been able to train properly or, like, I didn't even get into fighting spirit to, like, train and see the lads before they went to NXT. And um, so taking bumps again, I'm, like, eager to go for it, but my body's like, no, don't. Like, it's still... But once I do it, I'm, I'm fine. Like, it's just me overreacting. Um, 
like I remember Dave actually set up the Superstar Pro Ring for us to use and he just wants to see the size of it get the nice new tape on it and they give it a good clean and stuff like that and he left it up and I go down and just try and run the ropes and stuff like that with this prolapse disc I swear to God, I was like the Undertaker at that documentary time to run the ring. I was just in a bad way. I was just like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I think like this is this is finished and that. And then once my back was fixed and that, I was like, you know what? I'll go down, <laughs> give it a go. And um, um, I went to go and do a back bump. It's like my right side, my body was like, go. And then my left side stood still. I was like, nope. And I was like, oh, trying to force for a back bump so all this side I was waiting to go but then my left side I was like no you're not going nowhere and then I was like alright so I'll try and jump in and out the ropes and um, my body was like ready to go and then again my body was like no you're not doing it so I was like trying to get back into it again which I ended up doing and then anyway this, the point of the story for Friday was uh, I haven't took any suplexes or anything like that like I got flatlined by um, Sam I didn't take any mad suplexes or anything like, or body slam anything like that in the match um, that wasn't suiting me back, it was just the way the heat ran. And um, so to put new boards in the ring at um, Claw. And um, so Mike Hill from Fighting Spirit, he, he comes to see me as a retaining partner. He gives me a suplex. And they were all laughing at me because I went, <gasps> lands and like that. And the breath, the a breath come out of me like I like, winded myself from doing it. And my back was killing me the next day. I was meant to go to the spa at 8 o'clock in the morning on the Saturday, and I didn't go because. I didn't foam roll on my back because when I done it, I was like, Jesus, my back, oh, I can't breathe. And they were all laughing. I was like, that's been so long. Sorry, I'm getting phone calls there. Sorry. It's um, all right, mate. Sorry. Um, when I hadn't, I hadn't um, took a bump for so, so long. That's the biggest bump I took since before COVID. And um, sorry, since Jordan COVID and that. So um, it took an army. But when we done backdrops and stuff like that straight after, that was fine. Absolutely fine, and then just the next day, I will. I, I went. I went to come in. I was like, right, you get on the phone roller, just get this out of your back. And I went, oh no, I'll be, I'll be all right. Um, the bed, I'm sure the bed will like kind of sleep it off. And I woke up at six o'clock in the morning to get ready. And I woke up like stiff as a cardboard box. I was like, I can't go to training like this today. I can't. So I was up phone rolling me back off as best I could, and then I had to text the coach saying I couldn't get in. But luckily enough, I got in yesterday night instead. <laughs> But so you know, I always tell the lads, like, you know, the stunts that they do, mate, they hurt. Like, when they, uh, I don't care what people say about, like, oh, they've got layers of um, foam or whatever in there. Stuff. I'm telling you now, you don't, you don't take a suplex and you tell me how you get on. Yeah. That's it, man. I couldn't do it. I'm like Bambi under normal circumstances. I just haven't got the coordination to do do what you guys do. Like, you know, that's, uh, I've got a... a Actually, I've got a mouth. Funny, funny. I've got a mouth for me, James. That's about it. In terms of coordination, I just can't. I mean, two left feet. Funny enough, like I was explaining to the lads last night in Spartan, I said honestly, like my back was bad, and like it was me upper back, not me lower back. It was me upper back. It was just dead stiff. And um, I was explaining to them what happened. They were like, "Why are you here?" Yes, in Spartan, I told them. And I said, "You think though, from taking judo takedowns or getting double legs and that on thinner mats in our place." I'd be used to it, but he was. But then someone actually said to me, uh, um, "Santos Junior, play him." Um, um, I played Warzone with him and explained to him, and he was laughing. He said, "Just think of it though, when you're taking a judo takedown, it's a quick thing, and as much as inten- uh, as 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 um, how hard it is and and t- intensity it is, the suplex is higher, and it's more of a fall than just a quick bump on the floor. You're taking a bigger fall. So whenever explaining that, what the philosophy of that." Last night to the lads, one of the lads turned around and was like, you're the only person I know who can turn around and go to me. Yeah, we were doing suplexes last night because <laughs> he doesn't know no one else who does it. Fairly, man. Fairly, very. Oh, right, I need to ask you now, in terms of social media, where the viewers and listeners can find James Reed as it pertains to pro wrestling. Obviously, if you're, you're fighting background as well, boxing, grappling, Brazilian mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu, just as a mm-hmm. whole... Encompass you as a whole and where they can find you. Oh, it's on my Instagram or my Twitter. Um, it's just James Reed Pro, all one word, man. Um, yeah, I like to say freestyle fighter because um, I think MMA is uh, with her wrestling. MMA is too cliche in the way it's like thrown about nowadays. But like freestyle fighters, like a jack of all trades. So I can kick, punch, wrestle, jujitsu. It's just, uh, 
like um, even some UFC. Well, I was watching UFC today, and someone got announced as a freestyle fighter. Um, it's I think with pro wrestling, it's it just it's the, the the way it's thrown about too much nowadays. So I just say I'm, I'm a freestyle fighter, now, and yeah, you can find me on Instagram. Oh, I'm best on Twitter actually. There we go. There we go. Hey, Bruce Buffett, when he was introducing people for years, he would say a freestyle fighter. Yeah, as you say, still says it. Also, it's perfect. It's perfect because I would have thrown MMA at you willy nilly, introducing you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad. I'm glad you've told me that. And then also, what I've learned from you today is about you know you're trying to come away in in the wrestling ring from the combat sports side as well. I am honestly. It, it yeah. was interesting. It's better for me doing the color commentary. I know that's what you're trying to, you know, you're trying to get more into the pro wrestling side with your style. I, I am honestly because it's like um, I, you know, I mentioned this on the last podcast I was on. It's like if I was to go out there and just do pure MMA, it's like as a as a wrestling fan, it's like, it's, that's not what I want to see. It's like, I want to see some wrestling. So like, and you're gonna make you I'm gonna make things look weak compared to what we actually are. So if I come out and throw like armbar on on you now, Stu, and you roll me up and get out of it. It's like I've made that I've made an arm bar, bar look weak and I've made that um sport look weak. But then if it's like if I do stuff to then like manipulate you and like like press out used to work the legs and the lower back. Mm. If I can do that and work joints and like say give you a straight foot lock, right? Dead basic easy white belt stuff and it's easy to get out of and it does the job. It's it's something what you can tap out of if it's put on properly, but then it's something what can really damage it if if you're not getting out of it properly either. So again, it's like, oh, he's got a safe foot lock on, older for a bit, older for a bit. Oh, he gets out, because they had the basics to get out of. But again, that's something down the line. I can go, oh, I can put a yeah, heel hook on now for the finish or something. You know, but it, it won't be like constantly MMA fighting this, that, the other. It'll be like a mixture at the start. And then towards the end, you have little, maybe little blimps in between and stuff like that. Because if I keep on doing it, it's, it's, it's like, again, it's like some fans are there to watch wrestling, not UFC. That's perfectly put, perfectly mm. put. I look forward to seeing you for our second show, Superstar Pro Wrestling, August the 7th from Kirby Sports Bar for Save by the Ring Bell as well. It'll be good to catch up with you. I know obviously you're going to be busy, but yeah, we'll have a, I'll, I'll have a little chat with you when we're there. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the second match. I look forward yeah. to the ma- match announcements once management have decided who's facing who. So yeah, August the 7th for our next show, you'll get to see James Reed at the show in Kirby, and then on demand and on Powered4.tv as well. Funny enough about that venue as well, I used to live around the corner from it. I used to actually live two, it's two minutes away when I went on the venue on the map, so I was like, oh, there it is, there. It's like, it's 10 minutes away from us. And then I zoomed out and went, wait, there a minute. That's the house, what, like, <laughs> I, just, like I didn't grow up in it. was like, I was there as a baby, and like, people yeah. more or less grew up in it, the elder one, and then, uh, so it's two minutes away from where yeah. they used to live. So, full circle, full uh, circle, honestly, mate. Honestly, and it's the same with the, the, the very first venue, like the, the first match of the I'd wrestled on that was in Norris Green. And again, where that where the venue was, it went up, right, left. I used to live there as well. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, life's I'm mad. living next to the venues. L- life's mad, isn't it? You know, if, if people had told you that years ago, you'd have probably said, no, ne- never, but it's great, it's great. Uh, it's great for you guys l- locally in Liverpool. I can only imagine. Honestly, you were saying to me, should we tell you you're like a local lad? Like, no, I was only there for like, I was like, say, <laughs> like when I was three or four and then, mo- yeah. and then moved away. And then I moved in with my brother when I was 14. And then that's why I was around the corner from the Norris Green one. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a small world, isn't it? The way Mad- it works out. Like, madness. Crazy. Crazy. Well, it'll be good to see you again. Have a good, proper good catch up after it. Yeah. Can't wait for this next show. Because, uh, yeah. If like I said, and that, that, I've said to people, like if you ask me, which is the, the 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 like the newest promotion, what stands out out of everyone? It's no one else caught me. I like um, Superstar Pro Man. No one's caught me. I like them. Like I know the promotions are like coming through and starting out, but um, no one else has caught me. I like Superstar Pro. Nothing else has stood out more than Superstar Pro at the minute. So we um, obviously J and D. We've got a good product there, so they're gonna easily run away with this. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure for me. I know Mike feels the same. Mike's obviously on, on the comms 
for this. So it's uh, yeah, it was. I, I was nervous. I, I people were like, "You were pacing." That's just what I do. I kind of took myself out the situation, you know. Yeah. As I get to know people, uh, you know, I'll, I'll come out my shell a bit more. But yeah, it, it, it couldn't have gone any better that first show. Well, I was being easy with your comments, man, because like Mike Angus has seen me previously before on other shows, and he's no, he's seen me known as me kicking. So when I had Sam on the floor, and I was just messing with his wrists and his joints and that, like doing wrist holds and that, he was saying, no, James, keep him on the floor. That's where you yeah. want him to be. I was like, yeah, yeah. God, he gets it now. That's yeah. what I want to do. It's like, but I'd say, I'm aiming to get people, like you win a match on the floor, get the dirty pins. Yeah. So it's like, with being grappling and stuff like that, I need to put you on the floor to, to like do what I need to do and obviously win the match. So when you were saying like, that's it, keep him there, that's where you want him to be and stuff like that. I was made up that uh, someone's caught on to what I'm trying to do. Yeah. No, that's, that's it, man. My guest, all the way from Liverpool, on the roster for Superstar Pro Wrestling, one of the newest promotions on the UK circuit, it is James Reed. Absolutely fantastic having you on Stu's Wrestling Podcast today. Oh, thanks for having me, Stu. Cheers. Big thank you to Powered 4 TV for putting the episodes up on the on demand service there. Big thank you to John Scott and Rich Crowhurst for all the support. Really appreciate it week in, week out. Nothing's ever a problem. Also, we're doing Powered 4 TV Big Fight Weekly, the MMA and boxing show with my cousin Rich and John have put on these first it's been fantastic with that thank you to Chris Dutton again as always for the superb editing I couldn't do this without him and fantastic job once again thank you to Mike Angus for the intro as always to the show you can find the Stu Dressing Podcast merch at WrestleMerchCentral.com there is loads of stuff lots of different items that you can get mugs, hats face coverings, t-shirts, hoodies, even the new varsity jacket with embroidered Stu's Wrestling Podcast logo on it. Big thank you once again to Dean and the team for listing my products on there. Great work, great work. And we will see you soon for the next episode of Stu's Wrestling Podcast.